Hey guys, welcome to this video. My name's Jack and I'm the Avid Assistant. So for this one, we're just going to be going through how to create um, DNX transcodes for Avid Media Composer inside DaVinci Resolve. Um, now, I know you can make your transcodes inside Avid, but uh, like it or not, DaVinci is just faster at it. It is a very common workflow practice that's used by DITs all around the world. And so now you'll just get a sense of how they do it, how they make the transcodes neatly outside outside of Avid, and uh, you'll be able to mirror that workflow if that's something that you want to do. Or maybe, as I've seen a lot of people post it online, if you've ever tried this and had trouble with it, here we'll run through the whole process, create some transcodes, bring them into Avid, and you can have a look-see. So without further ado, let's get to transcoding. Right, so to get started, we launch DaVinci Resolve. Funny that. And you'll be brought up with your project selection screen. Then we're going to create a new project and I'm going to call it Array Test Transcodes because we're going to be using Array Footage for our transcodes. Now for your own project, feel free to name this the name of the production, put a transcode suffix if you like. As long as it's something that you can track and you know where your transcodes came from. Now just hit create and it's going to jump us into the newly created project. Now you'll notice once we come into Resolve that it's split up into several different tabs, very similar to Avid's workspaces. The buttons are down here to jump between them. Now for the purposes of this video, we're mainly just going to be using three, the Media, Edit and Deliver tab. So let's jump over to our Media tab and bring in some footage. So I'm going to go over to my R2D2 drive up here. Then I'm going to go Projects, Avid Assistant and Array Test Footage. So I've got a reel here of Array Test Footage. I downloaded this from Array's site where you are free to download um, all kinds of test footage from their various cameras. This is definitely well worth checking out for testing before you use uh, Array for the first time in your workflow. Anyway, so to bring all this in, I'm just going to drag and drop it over into my media pool here. Now it should be noted that if you're doing this on a pair shoot day basis, I would just create a new bin pair shoot day and just name it after each day as you bring them in. So I'm just going to drag them straight down into the media pool here. And as you can see, it's just like the media pool or an avid bin. This is all the metadata that Resolve can see. Resolution, file path, all that good stuff. So we can see that this has been shot at Apple ProRes 4448XQ. And it's got some game audio on it by the looks. No, that's uh, music that's on the clips. And conveniently for our testing, they've actually supplied all these clips in a variety of different resolutions as well. So yeah, that was nice of them. But before we get to putting these on a timeline and transcoding them out, we just have a couple more things to do. So the first is in our settings or project settings, which we can access from this little cogwheel over here in the corner. Now, I just want to draw your attention to a couple of things here. The first here is under general options. And I just want to make sure you're ticking this tick box here. Assist using real names from the source clip file name. And what this is going to do is it's going to duplicate the source clip file name into the tape column and the metadata. So this will provide a solid reference burned into your transcodes of metadata for online to relink back to the originals with. It's a common enough workflow that uh, your DITs will be familiar with. Now, one other thing I want to show you, we're about to add a LUT in a minute, but I just want to show you where you can add your own LUT should you need to. So if you come up to color management from your project settings here and then you can go open LUT folder and what this is going to do is quite literally open the folder where DaVinci Resolve stores all of its LUTs in the OS file browser. Then you can just drag and drop your custom LUT straight into here. You can even create a folder for a category if you've got a few LUTs. Just make sure that the LUT is in a compatible file format like cube. Then just toggle back to Resolve and click Update Lists. Then it'll update the uh, available LUTs so that when you go to select one in your media pool, your newly added one will be there. 
but in all likelihood you're just going to want to apply one of the camera stock ones since for offline editing all we really need is that it looks passable and not like a pile of crap. So how we're going to do this is with all your clips selected just right click any one of them and then we're going to go to this LUT option here and then we have all of our LUTs and LUT categories available to us and you can select whatever you want. Uh, generally speaking you may go to your camera manufacturer and select the relevant LUT to Rec 709 LUT for example Panasonic here. But our footage is array so we're going to do the array Alexa Long C to Rick 709 LUT. And now as you can see it looks way better. Now last thing I'm just going to draw your attention to before we start putting this on a time low timeline and transcoding is just a resolves counterpart to frame flexing. So if your footage has been shot in any kind of odd uh, 4x3 squeeze or different aspect ratio like only one of them was in this reel, you're just going to want to right click and go to click clip attributes. Then in this menu here you can see we can change your pixel aspect ratio as well as a number of other things. This is more or less a counterpart to avid source settings options. You'll see for this clip I changed it to 1x3 anamorphic because uh, without that option enabled you can see it looks like this, all squished in. No good. So I'm um, just going to put that back. And now we're ready to get transcoding. So I'm just going to select all these, do a right click and do create new timeline using selected clips. Now it's not particularly important what you call this timeline, but again, if you're doing DIT work and you've got a lot of shoot days to be transcoding, just make sure you're naming your timelines for each shoot day in an organized fashion so you can track them. You should also note that you can actually export ALEs straight from these Resolve timelines if you didn't get one from the camera, and this will allow you to have more metadata than Avid would be able to natively read. We'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Anyway, now we've got our timeline ready, let's double click to launch, and we're over here in the Edit tab. Now as you can see, we've got a timeline populated with all the clips we want to transcode. Now I did mention just before that you can make an ALE from this timeline and to do that you go up here to your media pool or your bin where you'll have all your clips as well as your timeline. Now if you right click on your timeline you just go to timelines, export and ALE and then you'll be able to make an ALE to bring footage into Avid with more metadata. But for the purposes of this video I'm not going to do that. I'm just letting you know that the option is there if you want it. Right, now that we have all our clips on our timeline ready to go, let's get transcoding. So if we jump over to the Deliver tab, you'll see that we have a whole load of options here. So starting with location up here, I'm just going to put this on my R2D2 drive under Avid Assistant. And then I'm just going to create a new folder here called Array Transcodes. Groovy. So select that and then we're going to ignore the file name option up here and you'll see why in just a minute. Right now bear with me and we'll jump through the rest of the settings. So of course we want individual clips otherwise it's going to render at the timeline as one single clip export. And then you can see we've got three tabs here, video, audio and file. So starting with video, of course we want that tick, we want video. And for format, we want MXF OP Atom. Now, quite often, this is the one main mistake I've seen people make where they select MXF OP1A, which, while Avid does support it, uh, just trust me, you're going to want to stay with OP Atom. It is the natively supported Avid choice. It will keep your Avid happy, and uh, happy Avid leads to happy editors. Now, next on from that, we have Codec. And this is where you want to either select DNA, DNX HD or DNX HR. Now this is up to you depending on what your workflow is. If you choose DNX HD, you can make unified proxies that are at 1080p. Now if you do choose to go down this route, I would suggest just jumping in your project settings and making sure image scaling is set to scale entire image to fit 
just to make sure nothing's getting cropped or rewarped when it makes the 1080p outputs. But what I like to do, and what I'm going to do for this video, is I'm going to transcode to DNX HRLB and I'm going to preserve the source resolution. So again, we can get all that lovely big source resolution to work with, but just at a lower bitrate, it's easier for the computer to digest. So in order to do that, we're just going to want to tick this option here of render at source resolution, and then I'll just gray out the resolution field to make sure you can't change anything. And I'll just preserve whatever the source resolution of the files are as it transcodes them out. And then I'm not going to bother with any of these settings down here. You can look more into them as you need to, but as Resolve puts it, there are advanced settings that quite often you won't need to bother with. So moving over to audio, I just like to make a couple of tweaks here. So of course we want to tick audio and linear PCM is the ideal codec. And I just like to change the channels to same as source. And what this is going to do is it's just going to mirror whatever audio channels are on the source. So uh, if there are five channels, we'll get five channels on our transcode. And if there are zero, then it's not going to bother transcoding any audio. So it makes it really clear and easy to see if there's a uh, guide audio on your transcodes when you bring them into Avid. Very useful. Now I'm assuming for this that any audio that's on the camera source is guide audio, so a bit depth of 16 is fine. But if you happen to know that the audio that's on your source camera files is the audio you want to use, then feel free to bump that up to 24, just to avoid 32, because I don't think it plays too well with Avid. Right, so that's everything we need to do in audio. So let's jump over to file, and we're just going to make a couple of tweaks here. So file name uses source file name, so that their transcoded clips are going to mirror the file name of the source they're made from. You can see this is why we ignored the file name option up above next to location. And then the one other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to preserve source directory levels. I'm just going to nudge this up to one. And what this is doing is it applies both metadata and also creates folders to mirror the source file path. Um, so just bear in mind if you're doing a whole lot of sources that are coming from a whole bunch of varied uh, card file paths, that's going to be mirrored as to where it mirrored where it puts them at the end. Um, but this can be very useful to have burned into the clip as metadata so that you can track uh, where the clip came from, both the camera card or the drive or whatever. And even if you get a whole mess of subfolders at the end, you can sort it all out just with a quick search. And you're going to move these into Avid Media Files anyway, so it's not really a problem. But for this instance, I'm just going to leave it at 1, and with, then we'll get the M001, the source real name for this. Now, that is actually all the export settings that we're going to need. So I'm just going to tick these three dots up here and save this as a preset that we can call upon in the future. I'll just call this Avid Source Res LB. Cool, that's that done. All ready for next time. Now, once you're happy with all of this and it's set correctly just the way you want it, just to add to render queue, select the render and hit render all. Now you'll notice once it's going that Resolve is remarkably fast. It will give you a uh, f speed indicator up here in frames per second. And um, yeah, it heavily uses the GPU as opposed to the CPU the way Avid does. So it's hardware accelerated uh, fairly quick and probably the main reason that it's uh, very popular with uh, DITs for this exact purpose. And we're done. Cool. So let's just save this and quit our resolve and go have a look. So I'll load up the folder where these were transcoded to and you can see we've got all our transcodes. Lovely Avid MXFs which we can just select and copy and put in our Avid Media Files folder. Now this drive doesn't actually have one yet so this is how you'll make one. You spell this Avid Media Files, so Avid's one word, Media Files is one word with a capital M, capital F. Again, you'll only need to do this if this is the first Avid Media that's going to be on this particular volume. So inside your Media Files folder, you're going to create a folder just called MXF. And then inside there, uh, just a folder with 
named by a number. So I'm going to name it for the date. And then inside there is where we can paste our MXFs. There we go. Now remember, you don't have to call this by the date, any number will do, but bear in mind if you're in something like an Avid Nexus environment, you may have to call it the name of the machine, followed by a dot, and then your number. But now that we've got our transcodes in the right place, if we launch Avid, it will do a scan and it will see the transcodes. There it goes. Now I um, jumped back into a new project that I've created just for this purpose, opened a bin, and now if I tab back to where I put my transcodes and have a look in the folder, you'll see that Avid's created these two files down the bottom here. These are media database folders just for Avid scan and tracking of files. And we're interested in the one that ends in .mdb, media database. We can track that one in here and that gives us our clips in the bin, all linked up and looking lovely. They play nice and fine, and they have our LUT on as well. Now we didn't have to use the MDB file. Another way to bring these clips in would have been to go to the Tools menu and use the Media tool. And then once in there, you just select the drive that they're on and select the project. Now this will be the name of the Resolve project that you created it on, since that fill populates the project field in the metadata. So if you select those, hit OK, and then you see there's all your clips there. And we could have just drag and drop them in from there. Yeah! Um, I hope you guys have found something useful there. Um, I hope you maybe enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, if there was anything that you got out of that, then please give the video a like, um, maybe subscribe, so that you can check out um, any future ones that are coming. Um, my next few videos that I've got coming are uh, to do with uh, prepping rushes. Uh, so I've, I'm going to do a series on you know, syncing clips uh, properly, um, you know, things to check for, uh, how to notate, how to prep your bins, uh, of a few different options of, of ways to lay out your bins for cutting, you know, stuff like that. Assistant editor essentials, so things you'll need to know to, to get in being a second assistant and you know, make yourself valuable to an editor. So if any of that sounds useful to you, um, hit subscribe and the notification bell and uh, that'll be coming your way very soon. But until next time, I'm the Avid Assistant and it is nearly 4 a.m. so I'm off to bed.